So we've got a question from a client on how to power and pair a BEA 10 RD 433. It's a it's an R, so it's a receiver, 433 megahertz, and a 10 TD 433 PB9 V, I think is what this is. Now it's a 10. What I've got here is a 10 TD 433 HH1. That's that's okay that it is that. The important part is it's a T for transmitter and that it's 433 megahertz. So we've got a transmitter, we've got a receiver. Client wants to see them powered and paired. Um, I've not done it with this combination in the past, but let's just, let's get a power supply, let's get a load. We've got a transmitter and receiver and let's try to break something. Let's move forward. All right, let's take a look and see. We've got a 10, RD433. It's a receiver, 433 megahertz. Under all circumstances, your megahertz has to match on your receivers and your transmitters. If they don't, it's not going to work. That's an antenna. We've got five wires coming out of here. We've got 12, 24 volt, AC or DC. Well, that's easy. We've got power on one and two, if that's one and two. Then we've got a common and a normally open. So we've got white is our common and green is normally open. Okay, so I'm thinking we're going to pick up power on the black and on the positive and negative, and then common and normally open. So we're going to power something with this. Now, this is a 10TD433HH1. That's a 3-volt uh, transmitter. I don't have any 3-volt batteries here, so I'm going to go grab a 9-volt uh, trans, uh, transmitter. I was not able to find a 9-volt transmitter, and now that I'm thinking of it, this piece of plastic that's here tells me there's likely a battery inside of here. Let's just remove the cover and make sure that there's a battery. Oh yeah, there's a battery. We're in good shape. Yeah, that piece of plastic there was just insulating all of this. And in fact, I don't even need any of this for my um, demonstration. All this is doing is pushing this button here. So I'll, I'll just roll with this. Put these two screws over here. So what do we need now? We need a power supply and we need a load. And then we need to pair these things together. So this battery, just take a look at this battery. Yeah, piece of plastics in there is just holding it. When I'm ready to roll this, run this, I'll just pull that out. Um, and what I'll do is I'll leave that there for now. Okay, so. I am going to go locate us a power supply and a load. So the question becomes is what should we what should we power with this? Well, what's really important to know is that you're not going to exceed the amp rating on what this can handle and nothing I will connect to it will be that large anyway. So this is rated for Yeah, really important to know. Contact rating, 1 amp at 30 volts. So we're going to be below 30 volts, which means our amperage would technically go up. E equals I times R. So I'm going to grab something that's certainly going to be measured in milliamps, like maybe an electric strike or maybe a magnetic lock if I have one laying around. Um, and yeah, we're good. So the important part of making sure that the load does not exceed the contact rating of the receiver. If it did, you're going to burn that out. Uh, not bur burn it out in the sense that the contacts will fuse or weld together. So I know that I'm, I'm in good shape. So I'm going to go pick up some goodies for us to get working on. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did. And hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, so what we've come up with here, we've got a power supply, just a, my, my bench Locknetx 510. Uh, I've got, I have 
I've got it wired. You know, just, it's all good. I've got wires coming out of it. 24 volts is how I have that set. In terms of a load, I happen to have a uh, solenoid sitting on my desk for an Adam's right exit device. So there's six wires coming out of here. I don't know what all these wires do off the top of my head, but all I'm interested in right now is finding out what the power is. I got two black, two blue, and then two more blue. So let's let's start with let's just start with taking a look at what a voltmeter or a uh, multimeter says. So, I'm going to check for continuity out of these two blue wires. I don't get anything out of those two blue wires because you'll, you'll hear it. Um, in terms, let's try, let's try these two blue wires. There's four here, so that's, that to me is odd. But there's obviously a reason for it. We'll discover what that is. Um, yeah, let's check continuity on two blue wires. Nothing. Let's check a black. No. Let's go to the other black. Ah, I got continuity there. So those two black wires I have continuity out of. Now what I'll do? Let's check for ohms coming out of the two black wires. Yeah, I'm getting ohms. So I don't know what the ohm value is of this solenoid, but I'm getting ohms, so I'm going to go with this being power, the two black ones. All right, let's move this out of the way. Now, um, I could wire the solenoid directly to my output power, and I'll do that just to see if we've got. So this is a this is a solenoid. This probably tells me that it sits out like this when it's connected to the exit device. Push it in; that'll probably travel in. Latches are retracted. Is how that works. So. If I power this, my guess is that it's going to stay held back because that's its natural state. It has to be its natural state because it's it's spring, well, it doesn't have to be its natural state. That's probably its natural state. When that's powered, that probably fires back like that. So let's, let's leave that hang out. Our power supply is not powered right now. And let me bring... Let me, let me terminate wires here for power. Two black wires on this solenoid, and then I know that I've got my red and green wires, or power, coming out of my power supply. Those wires aren't touching, so I'm not worried about anything happening. So when I plug this in, that ought to shoot in is what I'm expecting to see. Let's see what happens. So what I'm doing is I'm going through this, and I'm just... I'm troubleshooting. To, I'm, I'm checking to see what I'm dealing with. Yep, there it is. As soon as I plugged it in, it fired. And I'll tell you this. I cannot pull that out. Uh, unplug the power. Yep, there you go. Let's do that again for the sake of it. Yeah. So there's your electric latch retraction. Okay, so... What that means is we have to power our receiver and then we have to run our normally open and our common and normally open to these power leads. So I am unplugged. Let me get my wires off of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, I know that red coming out for me is my positive. 
and green for some reason is my negative. I'm actually going to put a couple of wire caps on this because it'll stay like that for a, for a minute. Well, I just really need to wire cap. Well, wire capping them both obviously is the idea. Okay, so let's power this and see what we get out of the receiver. Output power. Huh. Let's yeah, I'm not getting any lights on this at all. Okay, so the only thing that may, we may not get any lights out of here when we're just in standby mode. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. So I'm going to pull this out. Now pairing, I guess what we'll do is we'll just see if if no lights is normal. No lights are normal. Tip switches. Tip switch one is pulse and toggle relay. Let's take a look. Press transmitter once and relay will be active momentarily. And if dip switch one is on, press transmitter once and relay output is active indefinitely. Press transmitter again and relay will disengage. So I'm going to want a pulse relay with a 10 second hold time. So dip switch one is off, dip switch two is on. So I'm going to fly dip switch 2 to the on position. Okay. Maybe what would be nice. So if we liberated ourselves some wire here. Okay, looks better. So we've got the dip switches set to, as to how I would want them to be set. Um, what I'd like to do is pair. So learn. So we're going to pair it with learn without delay. Press learn with delay here, or learn without delay. Then there's a potentiometer. So dip switches, learn without, learn with delay, learn no delay in potentiometer. Learn with delay button or learn without delay button on the receiver according to the activation requirements. If learn with delay is selected, turn the potentiometer clockwise to set a zero second delay. After the learn cycle is complete, adjust the potentiometer to the uh, desired. So we're just going to power learn, learn no delay. 
So press the transmitter button repeatedly until the blue LED on the receiver illuminates. Okay. Okay, so, so learn no delay. And, and hopefully we're going to see a blue light. Okay, yeah, we're powered. Okay, that may have worked. Learn without delay. I pressed that once. Let's go back and look at the instructions. So we're definitely powered. Press the transmitter button repeatedly until blue LED on the receiver illuminates. Okay, so I didn't do it right. So learn no delay. There we go. There we go. Now this should activate that relay. Okay, then it says repeat what I just did for additional transmitters. Okay, so now I think the only thing I need to do is wire my common and my normally open to my power on this, and this should be paired. So, first things first, I'm going to disconnect the power. I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to wire these up. Tell her no. All right. So we're just terminating these. Now, I want to make sure those wires don't touch. <clears throat> That's called a short. Think of it as a short. Oops. Don't want them to touch, but I do want them to. I don't want. I do want them to stay together. So let's get. That's the normally open. Uh, I'm okay with the second black and the common. And then I'm going to, because I know my hands are in the way, I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so I've got common going to the power, normally open, going to power. When I power this and then hit the switch, I should expect this to clank back. And if it doesn't, then we have to go back to the lab. We're powered. Nothing's happening. That didn't work. Ten seconds for sure is what's happening there. Huh. Didn't expect switching it to normally closed, obviously, to work.
getting voltage. Not getting voltage out of the relay. Interesting. Common. Okay, not getting voltage coming out of the relay for some reason. Why would that be? Hmm, let's take a look. Thank you for calling the BEA Technical Department. Please leave your name, company, product you are working on, and your phone number, and the first available technician will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you. Hi, it's Rich, Architectural Builders. I just have a question. I've got a 10 RD433 and a 10 TD433, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not getting output voltage on common and normally open either in any condition. Uh, I'm good with voltage at one, at, uh, you know, one and two, let's say, but three and four, I'm not getting anything out of it when I activate the uh, receiver via the transmitter. Um, and I am officially stumped. Please give me a call, 239-315-7889. Again, that's 239-315-7889. Thanks. Hi, this is Richard. Hi, Richard. This is Aaron with BEA Tech Support. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. What you got going on today? So I have a um, I have a, a 10 RD433, and I have a okay. 10 TD433. For some reason, I'm not getting voltage across common and normally open in either state of the of the receiver. I'm paired. I'm getting a blue light. Okay. Um, but I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, well, that's because the uh, the receiver is just a dry contact. So all it is is just to be like a switch to open or close a circuit. It doesn't provide any output voltage. Ah. Uh, so I mean you get the I mean you could test it to make sure that it's working with you know putting it into activation and just checking you know for continuity uh yeah. you know whenever okay. you're giving an activation but uh yeah if you're needing to I supply see. power to something as well you're going to have to run the power, power separate and then that chooses the trigger yeah, I'm obviously getting continuity, um, and it uh, okay. escaped me that those were dry contacts. Of course they are. Uh, awesome. Yep. Thanks for pointing that out, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. You have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, well, that makes life a lot easier. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Okay, once we, once I realized that, once I, it was pointed out to me that we have dry contacts here, we can't turn, uh, well, our, we're turned off, we're unplugged. We can't <clears throat> turn on voltage to our relay because there's no, it's a dry contact, which means there's no voltage passing through there. We'll have continuity, but no voltage. So in order to make this work, <clears throat> we're going to have to take, There's a total of six wires, so we're going to need three terminations. 
you're going to need the common leg going to the, I'm just making sure we're unplugged, to the positive power coming in. Let's terminate that. You're going to need one of the power legs going to the negative power coming in. Okay, and what this means at this point, let's check that out, is we're going to have okay we have positive well, pardon me we have power going to the negative leg we have our other leg here we're picking up voltage through the common because it's connected to the positive coming from the power supply. The last thing we need to do to make the relay, make the relay on the transmitter on the receiver act like a light switch is terminate the other power leg with the normally open wire. So what we have here is we're getting power on one leg to the load. That's easy. That's our negative. We're, we're getting power on our positive leg from the power supply to our common. That's connected to our normally open, which when the receiver is activated by the transmitter, will then close the circuit and power will flow through the other negative leg. That should work. So let's give that a whack. Let's pull this out so that you can see that fire. I'm going to plug in the power supply nothing should happen hopefully nothing okay now when i hit this that should fly back and it does i set it up to be a ratching um to be um maintained so when i hit it again it it uh opens the circuit activate it fires the circuit there you go. And all I did there was I changed the dip switch from um, dip switch 2 from off to on, and that made it a pulse. Or a really, what I have is I have a toggle setting is what I have. I've got this toggle setting. Dip switch 1 is on. which is a toggle relay dip, 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 dip switch two is off, which is a half second hold time. So it doesn't really matter. So that's how we wire this. The important part of all of this was, let's go through it one more time. We are powering the, the relay. We have power coming off of the outputs from the power supply going to our red and our black. The red and the black go through this wire to the red and the black down here. Then, chopping this tree down easily, take one of the two power legs from the load and wire it to the incoming power from the power supply. That's easy. You're going to pick up voltage from your three into your common wire from the other leg coming from the power supply. That leaves two wires left. The normally open wire, which is really the light switch, on, off, on, off, has to go to the other leg to the load because that is what allows open circuit, closed circuit, open circuit, closed circuit, which again is controlled by the receiver, the transmitter. There you go. That's how you pair and power a 10 rd 433 and the um and and again this is just if i put this all back together it would just it would look like this Oops. just want you to have the semblance of what this is supposed to look like that's what it would look like Okay. Great. Let's wrap up this video on camera.
Okay, so that was fun. Unfortunately, I had to call for that last push to realize it was, yep, a dry contact. I'm sure it says it in the installation instructions. Um, I'm sure I don't see where it says it's a dry contact, but it has to. I, frankly, I probably should have just known it was a dry contact. Now, what I could have done was used a was used the BEA 10 BR3 maybe 10 BR3. Yeah, programmable programmable three rate way logic uh, logic module that has a wet contact and that should have worked. That should work just like. I wanted it to. So because wet volt well, wet contacts going to provide voltage, dry contacts don't. So in this case, we had to to chop the tree down easily. The common in the in the green are the is the light switch. You got two power lines coming off of the load. One has to go back to the power supply. Great. The other has to go to the normally open wire, which leaves in order to complete the circuit, the common wire, it has to go back to the other leg of the incoming power. Because without that, you won't have any power to provide it once the relay took the normally open um, white and green uh, wires, or terminals three and four, hit the transmitter, whoop, closes the, the circuit, solenoid fires. So that's what it is. Is it easy? It is once you understand it. Is it easy to get there? No, it's not. But it's just the first time that you have to get there is the hard learning curve. And after that, I think it's pretty much downhill. Maybe no next time we'll uh, experiment with a wet contact. Any questions on this or any other way to wire stuff, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.